So vertical projectile motion, um, or better known as just objects being uh, thrown straight up in the air or falling straight back down, I think it's better looked at with an example. So we'll have a cliff, a little bit of grass growing on the edge, if I can draw grass on there, and there's your cliff going down, and something on the bottom. And we're going to push, uh, uh, we'll change our grass into a big rock. We're going to push a rock off the cliff and it's going to go down. Um, the distance to the ground is uh, 10 meters, just to make it nice and easy. Uh, and in fact, that's all we, we need to know uh, to analyze the situation. So, um, Looking at our kinematic equations, um, actually even before we do that, what are we trying to find out? The, the important factors in this are A, what's the acceleration? Now we know that uh, gravity is acting on it, so the acceleration is actually G, which is uh, rounded off to 10 meters per second squared. So this is accelerating due to gravity. Um, the uh, final velocity, um, we don't know. So that would be something we have to calculate. We've got the distance over here um, already known. Uh, and the initial velocity, that's something that we're not told about, we don't really know about, but we can assume that it is zero meters per second because um, at the start at the top, it um, yeah, has zero velocity. You're pushing it off horizontally just enough to get it over the edge of the cliff. There is no horizontal uh, motion at all. And, and it goes straight down. So there's a few assumptions we're having to make um, to be able to carry out this, uh, this analysis. Um, so what else have we got? There's, there's the time. Um, we don't know what the time is either. So let's just put these couple of things down there uh, and we'll do a little analysis to see what we can find out about what we don't know. So for starters we don't know the final velocity. The velocity it reaches as it falls is 10 meters. So um, we could look at um, an equation that will help us find out that. So we're trying to find the final velocity, uh, circled in blue there. Um, let's look at the first equation here. Um, D equals uh, VIT plus half AT squared. That's no good because um, we don't have a final velocity in that. Um, this one under here, we've got VF equals VI plus AT. Well, the initial velocity is zero, so that will give us VF equals AT. We know A, but we don't have T, so we can't use that one just yet. We might be able to use that later if we find time first. Uh, what about this one up here? We've got VF squared, that's one thing we're trying to find out. We've got VI squared, which we know, and 2, which is just a number, and A, which we know, and D. So yes, this equation is good, and if we look down to the third one, that's also got time, so we couldn't use that either. Um, so let's just uh, see if we can perform a calculation uh, to, to, to do that. Um, give ourselves a little bit of space, move uh, upwards I think, and our equation was uh, Vf squared. You can look at the equation derivation in other videos which we'll link to from this uh, page. Vf squared equals Vi squared plus 2ad. Um, our equation is straightforward, we don't need to rearrange it. We should rearrange it first if we um, can't directly substitute in. Um, but we can directly substitute in, so let's go right ahead and do that. VI is zero, so that's easy. Uh, let's put it in there just so we can see where we're going. VI squared is zero, time plus uh, two times we've given gravity, which is 9.81 uh, meters per second squared, but we're, we're rounding it to 10 for the ease of uh, the calculations. And our distance or displacement from the top to the bottom is also 10 uh, meters. So it gives us a nice easy calculation. Uh, 2 times 10 times 10 is 200. I hope I got that right. 2 with two zeros after it. Yep. Um, but we haven't finished our calculations yet um, because that's VF squared. So that's a common mistake. In fact, it's good practice um, to, at this earlier step over here, um, to, to rearrange. So what you would do to do that is um, perform a square root of everything on the right hand side and then that would equal VF um, without the squared. Okay, but anyway, VF squared equals 200. So that means um, that VF equals 200 
of the square root of 200. And I don't have a calculator to calculate that out. Um, <laughs> what's it going to be approximately? 14-ish? I don't know. You can plug that into your calculator. That's not what we're teaching um, right here. And whatever it is that teaches us, uh, tells us what the final velocity is. And um, we can, yeah, we've calculated that part. The next part to find out is the time. Um, so I'll, I'll do that in a different color so that we can distinguish what's going on here. But let's just cruise back up to our kinematic equations and see which one can help us. Um, now I'm going to assume that we don't have the final velocity um, again because we didn't find an unrounded um, a final value for it. Um, but if we're looking for the time, um, and we can, let's just go in reverse order. Let's look at this equation. I'm moving it. I need to go back to my pen tool. Um, there's my equation there. Um, that one has the distance. I've got the distance. Um, the initial velocity, I've got that. Final velocity, can't use that. It's got the final velocity. Back up to this one. Same again. This one's got the final velocity. Can't use that. Um, go back up to this one. Um, that's got the final velocity too. Can't use that. Looks like our only one that we can use is this one over here. So that's d equals vit plus half at squared. That'll help us to find the time. So uh, this time we're going to move across to the side uh, to do this, to look at the time. So uh, let's just write the equation out again. Always good to start fresh so you're not trying to hold too much in your brain. d equals vit uh, plus half at squared. Okay, so we remember the initial velocity. Again, we, we would actually have to rearrange this, but just to make it a little bit easier on ourselves, we're going to do one uh, simple substitution first. The initial velocity was zero, um, so so we can then put, substitute that into this term and cancel it out. So we're left with d equals half a t squared, and that is super awesome because that's much easier. Um, so we're going to shift everything around and rearrange it to get t by itself, making t the subject is what that's called. So uh, multiplying both sides by 2 to get rid of that half part. So 2 times d equals um, a t squared. And we want to divide both sides by a to cancel out the a on that side. And then we're going to have to square root that side. So in the final we'll get t equals the square root of 2d, not an a even though I've drawn that with kind of a small over a itself. Okay, so we're there. We just need to shuffle things around a little bit. And just because I like doing it, let's make that a little bit shrunk and shift that up there. And uh, let's substitute into this. So t equals the square root of 2 times the distance is 10 that it's falling through, divided by the acceleration, which is also 10 which that's a nice nice one because it's going to cancel out on the inside there, those 10s. And we're left with t equals the square root of 2. And the square root of 2, oh look at that, this is a square root of 200. And this is a square root of 2. I should have been able to work that one out, being an electronics kind of uh, guy. Um, the square root of 2 is a classic number, and if you're mathematically not, it is 1.4 if you're into your maths and, and such, um, which relates to your sine curves and uh, the area under your sine curve. Um, anyway, actually no, I think I... Don't worry about that. It's related to root mean square calculations anyway, so that means this one over here is going to be 14. Um, 14 point something or other. But in any case, that was our final velocity. And this is our time. We need units on both those. Per second, oh, per second, it's a 1, and then 1.4 seconds. So one thing we could do to double check our calculations is to uh, see if um, when we substitute, uh, say that, that we just calculated the time, if we substitute the time into one of the other equations we didn't use to try and find the final velocity, then um, we should get roughly the same value, roughly because we've rounded so we won't have the exact value. But if we were using a calculator, we'd use an unrounded value in the calculations. Okay.
So uh, we'll do another example shortly, and that's where it's going up and down. But this is a good start into that. Cool, there's me drawing a star, because you're a star for making it through over 10 minutes of physics.